It is time once again for the Real People Multi-Game Solitaire Mega Tournament. Uh, there are three things I need to tell you about before we get into the action that is this game. That I'm just, it's a, just to, so I don't have to say all three games. I'm just calling it Tri-City. I don't, I don't really endorse that as a title for a game, but this isn't really a complete game either. But it's a three cities game, Tri-City. First, there was a fire. That's the first thing I need to tell you about. The fire, um basically just affected this row here. We had to look at which one was the, the lowest value, which was right here. Um, and Pinky had to decide whether or not she wanted to spend points or money to save that. She decided not to, partially because, you know, it's a lot of points and money for not a very valuable building. Um, it kind of That kind of simulates how people in power might not uh, want to extend themselves in order to help people who aren't who aren't on valuable land uh, whereas if someone's on valuable land they might be more willing to help you seems like that's some a thing um, and also that that hurt the mayor who was um, who is now giraffe it took away six of her points which was really hard on her so that was the first thing second thing is I forgot to have an actual effect to this which is the whole reason I'm doing this thing in the first place um, the the actual way the vote shook out kind of follow the effect anyway like it was these people who got the money uh, and so I didn't think it was that necessary to do anything that powerful but they did get um, a new industry in a slum area and what I decided was the deal was that the um, our, our our town players here Oops, sorry Desi um, would get, you know, a nice little business right there. And so they have a little uh, industry that they were just given by the, the higher up business community, the capitalists out there. And that, that was, that helped the city get better because they didn't have riots. So they kind of bought them off with having, here, here's a little tiny factory that you can, you can sew sweaters in or knit sweaters. Um, so that's that. Oh, and the third thing is, I think I've been doing this wrong in that I think these fellows need a lot more turns for this to be, a, for them to be able to do anything in the game. They've only had like three turns or so. And it, it makes more sense too in what's, what's happening on the map, right? Because all these buildings are springing up. That's going to take a while for buildings to spring spring up. Meanwhile, these, these fellows just get to go down the street and stop and maybe pay for something, go shopping. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is after each one of their turns, all of these people, um, except for the people in the back, Vaughn and Sunny, are going to get a turn. So they get to cycle through their turn every time. And I think that's going to kind of have a better rhythm. Um, it's gonna, it's gonna probably hurt our urban sprawl people because they will lose money faster, but you know, people should, I don't know why you would ever want to pay rent in this game. Um, if, I guess if you get low enough in money, you're going to pay rent when you're like really starting to die. So in, uh, the regular game, Our Town, you, when you pass the bank, which is the go of this, this, uh, variant, Monopoly variant, um, you get your salary. Different from Monopoly, salary is based on how many properties you own and how many properties uh, the group owns. So you get more money if you own a property directly. If it's owned by the group, you get uh, half that. Uh, so people have homes here and they, they also have workplaces, right? To prevent people from just like going around the block a bunch of times and collecting salary, we have a, uh, we're going to use quarters. Uh, the tails, if someone's on tails, that means they need to go back home and like sleep and clean up before they can work again. If they're on heads, it means they haven't worked yet, so they can, they're still eligible to go to work. So that's going to be a problem for Hair Bear, and I'm sorry Hair Bear, because he just went to work, but he doesn't have a house yet. However, he can use the money he got from working to help buy a house, and so that's, that's good for him. Or rent a house. I mean, you don't have to buy a house. You can rent, too. Smudge sold a newspaper to Banana. I think he was, she's been his customer maybe twice now. Um, and it reminded me that you can borrow money in this game in our town. Uh, but not anymore, I guess. So that's, that's actually kind of nice, though, if these people get in hot water or or they become cold because of the lack of the flow, the warming flow of currency, 
um, they can borrow from the bank if this card goes away somehow. I'm not sure. I guess probably another newspaper would do that, right? All right, we have a housing situation that led to Desi having to pay rent. It might make Hair Bear have to pay exorbitant rent later on. Um, what's going on here is there's really only one affordable house on the map because of that fire. They really should have probably snatched those houses up beforehand, but I guess then their house would have burnt down, so that wouldn't have been that helpful anyway. Um... And Desi was able to get it. Uh, you know, Hair Bear was magnanimous enough to, like, pitch in for the house so that it's group owned. But um, the trouble is that then he, he was kind of feeling bad about it and he felt like he didn't really have enough money to pitch in on this building, what, this civic building, whatever it is. And so that would have left Desi having to pay for it by himself because either you buy it all together uh, to make it cooperatively owned, or you buy it separately. So Desi didn't want to um, didn't want to have to spend five hundred on it because he would have been pretty low on money. So he had to spend fifty in rent. Uh, I don't know what Hair Bear is going to do. It might actually be more profitable for him not to work until there's more housing, because to go to work and then go home, he has to pay the rent on the home. And the rent is so much that it it eats up. It 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 costs more than than he makes at the at the whatever the shoe factory or wherever he works. I would say maybe it's a produce processing plant. So all our sprawlers have had a turn, um, including Junior's, which was in the last video, I think. So I thought it'd be good to check in with how things are going because things have changed quite a bit. Mainly, uh, the main thing is Stubby, he was given, because of an event, I think, he was given the police chief role. No, 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 an election came up and uh, they were tied. So he got the police chief role f uh, from, from Pinky. It was actually Junior who got to break the tie. Uh, so he had to decide which one. Him. At the time, Pinky was way out front. But since then, Stubby had a turn, and he was able to kind of parlay that role, as well as his union boss extended AP that he gets for being the union boss, to really catch up. Look how the track is. There were also some favorable events for both of them and some payouts in this zone here. Uh, but, yeah, it's, uh, the story's very much changed with we have Pinky and Stubby kind of neck and neck, and then Giraffe and Junior way back here. But, you know, I think the points can swing pretty quick uh, depending on what happens. And, you know, uh, I'm assuming like in most games, as you go up and progress, especially since there's a definite like three-step progression here, there's going to be a, a jump in what you're able to obtain. Uh, that just seems to be what you do in games. So we'll go through and go with these guys again, and then we'll go back over to Junior. So Hair Bear's decision not to... Um, not to put any money into like cooperative endeavors has has caused dissension in the ranks, and it's affected the, our three players in different ways. Oh. Our three other players, uh, Desi, for his part, he thought you know this would be a good property for everyone to get, so he went and landed by it. But then Hair Bear refused to buy it. Oh, sorry, I wasn't even showing it. Refused to buy it, and so then Desi had to pay a hundred dollars rent, which was pretty expensive. Flush, um, he just went ahead and bought this used car lot by himself. Because if, you know, if Hair Bear is not going to chip in, he's going to, you know, help himself out. Banana did the same thing, but she bought her house. This kind of makes sense, you know, own your house. Um, and she was going there anyway, and she didn't want to have to, you know, pay rent just to get her mail. So we'll see. I mean, there it could be that the group decides to buy, like, maybe this house together or this house together and then let Hair Bear live there as a way of, of getting back on track. Um, I don't know, it depends. Depends on how things shake out, literally, with the dice. I've decided on a new rule for Smudge. He's gonna have to pay if he is next to co-op owned property. Um, just to kind of give him a little something else to do and like a little bit different of a calculation. Uh, it's gonna probably be that the the co-op people, you know, our, our, our town players here, are going to be sticking near co-op property. So in order to sell papers to him, which is his main way of getting money, he has to go, you know, kind of where they're at. So he's going to be looking for kind of like people who stray away from, from the cluster of, of co-op owned areas. Uh, right now, 
He's got a safe spot here because th this is just individually owned by Flush. So he got one, two, three, four, five, six, not have to pay anything. And then he's nearing on Flush, maybe be able to sell him a paper next turn. Junior managed a pretty strong coup. He got the uh, extra favor thing. Uh, in case you don't know this about the game, you can usually only save one of these cards, these contract cards. He can now save two. That could be an important advantage. He also got a factory. He's getting lots of money. As the treasurer, he pulls in two from each player every turn. So he's hoping he can parlay these advantages uh, into uh, being able to catch up more with his competitors. Desi and Hair Bear are starting to get pretty annoyed, but uh, with the different groups of people. Hair Bear is very annoyed with particularly this group of Flush and Banana. Um, the co-ops just needed some repairs, and Flush and Banana clearly have a lot more money than everyone else, but they still insisted that the cost of repairs be divided up equally. Hair Bear feels like, hey, he's had to take a hit, especially on that last deal that was made. Um, you know, started out as a deficit, the least they could do is kind of just pull a little bit extra until he can get above water. Um, Desi, for his part, he is still kind of annoyed about that rent thing as well. It kind of cost him a turn and he wasn't able to really do anything this turn. He also had a bad roll. Uh, so he's a little bit annoyed with Hair Bear for that and also annoyed with Flush and Banana for pretty much the same reason. Pinky used the municipal court to get a hold of the union boss. Uh, job. She was really tired of not having a job. She's not going to be able to keep it for long. Well, at least till it'll take until the, the track goes around again um, because she has no industrial buildings, but she intends to really make use of those two extra AP every turn in the meantime. This crime wave has really helped Stubby. He is now in the lead because he got so great because of the crime that, and he's the police chief. Uh, they had to give him so much prestige and respect because the crime wave. All right, our group has come up with, a, our group of Our Town players has come up with a, a solution to the whole hair bear needs a place to live problem. He had a perfect role to get to this, this building right here. They had 200 in their collective pot. It was 1,100 cost for the, for the house, but they split it up. Um, hair bear did have to pay a little extra, and uh, $100 more than everyone else. And that, that still kind of sticks in his craw, but at least he has a place to live. And it kind of helps that the mail that he got when he got there gave him $150 for some reason because the, their cooperative work has been so good. All right, our next test card for our city's game has come out. Uh, this is the city deck one. So let's see what the issue is going to be. Business boycott. Agitators picket stores demanding immediate end to job discrimination. Business asks government for police protection. See, it's weird. These are like kind of maps as to how these people are supposed to react. I almost don't need the people. I could play them that way. I kind of thought of them as effects. I think some of them are more effect-like. Government proposes new laws to permit more forceful riot control measures. So that's like an effect that they would vote on and then see what would happen. But instead we have this thing which kind of already is saying what the agitators are doing. I think I'm going to discard that one and hope to find a different one that's going to work better with what we're doing here. Garbage. Some dweller, slum dwellers demand twice a week garbage pickup to ease street pollution. Agitators throw garbage at police cruisers. Business wants city garbage collection services turned over to private enterprises. Okay, so that's not like even a single thing they're voting on. What are they voting on there? Uh, it's just saying different positions. Um, I think we can maybe work with this one, though. We have to do it anyway. So the, the kind of hardwired rewards, or what would happen, is it's good for business and the slum, slum dwellers, less good for the agitators and the government. Because remember, there's, their money is going to be compared at the end to see who wins. And yeah, the next one, the slum dwellers get a big payout. So the so this one's kind of middle-ish, but I would think that the agitators and the government would want to get a little bit of a kickback in order to vote for this, especially considering how much money everyone has. Okay, I'm going to go into negotiations. You know the, you know the issue at hand, and it's garbage. What to do about garbage? All right, I set up these action figures so you can see just what people are thinking. Um, before they've actually negotiated. So no one's offered anyone a payout right now. Um, 
So basically, what if they're sitting down, that means they want to vote against it, meaning they want to put no points in. If they're standing up, they want to vote for it. If they have their arms up, they want to do some sort of um, police action or agitation. So if you see here, Sonny wants to vote for it, but he wants to have, um, he wants to do some, some agitation. Uh, Flush doesn't want to vote for it, and he wants some agitation. And Banana wants to vote for it, but she doesn't want any agitation. Here we see that the agitators don't like it, and they want to agitate. Um, there's a mixture here, and this is kind of the real interesting thing, because they, they all have an equal vote in the business community, with Dancing Bear as possibly the tiebreaker. But uh, in the political realm for government, they have different amounts of votes. So Junior has one vote, Pinky has one vote, Giraffe has two, and um, oh no, and and he fell over. I, I really like that guy for Stubby, but he keeps falling over. So I'm going to see if they're going to exchange any money and then see if the votes change. Okay, so it changed only a little bit. I had to kind of rule, you're supposed to use a timer for the negotiations and it's supposed to be done in real time. I can't really do that. So I kind of just felt out whether it, you know, how the, long the conversations took me for each person um, or each pair and just kind of how it would all work out. Um, the only real differences, I think, well, like, so Dancing Bear, she wanted to talk to Chinky. Uh, Chinky wanted a lot of money in order to vote for this. And so she just was not going to do it because um, then she figured that the, the, the way to do it, because she knew how these guys were going to vote, was to talk to them. So then she talked to Giraffe and tried to get to buy off Giraffe. But Giraffe didn't figure she needed money that much. You know, she can only do so much with money. And it's really about, you know, kind of like managing the flow of the game. Money is definitely useful in this game, but it's not end all and be all, and that's really all Dancing Bear could offer her. And then she was out of time. Um, Chinky, he talked to Sonny and paid him 5000 to just vote no, um, even though he plans to vote for it and vote and do a police action. That puts us at four votes for business, one vote in police action for the government there, uh, zero votes for the slum dwellers, no riot, zero votes in a riot for the agitators. So the riot cancels out the police action. That puts the vote at five. Okay. So five makes us go this way to tax levy. Government collects 10% tax from each player to cover costs of increased police protection. So that's going to be our second major vote of the game. Um, after we do 10, the game's over. I should probably mark that because I'll forget. All right, I think as a quick and dirty way to deal with this, um, there's not going to be twice a week garbage collection. There are going to be, um, there is going to be garbage thrown at police um, cruisers and the slum dwellers locations are going to be impacted. So I'm just going to take these off. I'm not sure how else to make it seem like there's more garbage in the city. So these residential zones, which are actually, were actually probably the upscale part of the city. Um, that's where the quote slum dwellers lived. They're no longer as posh. And so now I guess they're more slummy. Um, and I don't think there are private garbage collections either. Okay, so we'll continue next time on the Real People Multigame Solid Hair Mega Tournament. I put that uh, sports team card in the bottom half of this deck, so it will come up again. Um, who knows when? We'll find out later.